Hello everyone, Foxy here, and welcome to Mostly Mental. Today, I'd like to continue my series on combinatorics with some of the most important numbers in mathematics, the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence begins 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on, where each of these numbers is the sum of the two before it. And we're going to label these numbers with an F followed by a little subscript here. And for reasons that'll become clear in a moment, we're going to start with zero. And so the rest of these are F1, F2, F3, F4, and so on. And so our definition that each of these numbers is the sum of the two before it can be written as f sub n is f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n minus 2. Now, we're studying combinatorics, so the most important question is, what do the Fibonacci numbers count? The answer, it turns out, is tiling. Specifically, f sub n is the number of ways to tile a row of length n using only tiles of lengths 1 and 2, that is, squares and dominoes. For example, a row of length 5 can be tiled in 8 ways, like so. Why does this give us the Fibonacci numbers? Well, there are two types of tilings the ones that end in squares, and the ones that end in dominoes. And how many end in a square? Well, that last square is fixed, but the rest of the row can be tiled in f sub n minus 1 ways. And similarly, the last domino here is fixed, but the rest can be tiled in f sub n minus 2 ways. And so that gives us f sub n is f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n minus 2, as expected. OK, so what can we do with these tilings? First, let's find a pattern. Let's try taking the running total of the Fibonacci numbers. So we start with 1, plus 1 is 2, plus 2 is 4, 7, 12, 20. Huh. Looks like we're just one shy of a Fibonacci number each time. Putting that in symbols, we get f0 plus f1 plus f2 plus so on up to fn plus 1, which we can more compactly write as the sum of k less than or equal to n of fk plus 1 is just going to be f sub n plus 2. Okay, now that we've got a formula, let's prove it. As usual, we'll do that by counting something in two ways. In this case, what we want is the number of tilings for a row of length n plus 2. As we've seen, that's f sub n plus 2. Now consider the position of the last domino in the tiling. If there are k spaces before it, that is, the domino is in positions k plus 1 and k plus 2, then there are f sub k ways to tile the left. And since this is the last domino, we know that everything afterward must be a square. So there's only one way to tile everything to the right. And so adding this up over all k, we get this sum here. There's also one additional tiling if we just don't have a domino, if everything is squares. And that gives us the extra one we're looking for. Let's try another example. Let's take the Fibonacci numbers and square them. So we get 1, 1, 4, 9, 25, 64, 169, 441, and so on. 
what happens if we add consecutive pairs? Well, we get 2, 5, 13, 34. Huh. Looks like we're getting every other Fibonacci number. Putting that into a formula, we get f sub 2n is f sub n squared plus f sub n minus 1 squared. Once again, let's prove it with tilings. Now, the left side here is already f sub 2n, so that suggests we should be tiling a row of length 2n. And on the other side, we have f sub n squared and f sub n minus 1 squared, which suggests we want to break it into two tilings of length n and two tilings of length n minus 1. Well, the n's are pretty easy to find. We just cut the tilings in half. And so this gives us f sub n, and this gives us f sub n, because we can tile them independently. Which tilings do we miss with that? Well, those are the ones where we've got a domino across the middle. And if we do that, then we've got n minus 1 on each side for f n minus 1 and f n minus 1. And so putting it all together, we get f sub n times f sub n plus f sub n minus 1 times f sub n minus 1, which is this formula here. One more example, and this time we won't start with the formula. Let's say we have a row of length m plus n plus 1 that we want to tile. How many ways can we do that? Well, once again, it's f sub m plus n plus 1. Okay, now let's consider what tile is in position m plus 1. Well, there are three options. Either it's a square, it's the first half of a domino, or it's the second half of a domino. If it's a square, there's m spaces to the left to, the to tile and n to the right. If it's the first half of a domino, it's m to the left and n minus 1 to the right. And similarly, in the last case, it's m minus 1 to the left and n to the right. And so in total, that gives us fm times fn plus fm times fn minus 1 plus fm minus 1 fn. Now let's take another look at the problem from the end of the last video. Recall Pascal's triangle, which I've drawn here shifted to the left, but is the same thing as last time, is made up of the values of n choose k, that is, the number of ways to choose k of n things. And if we take the sums along the diagonals, like so, we get 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and the rest of the Fibonacci sequence. But why? Well, consider the tilings of length n. How many of them contain k dominoes? Well, if a tiling contains k dominoes, then that means it's using 2k spaces. And so we have n minus 2k left for the squares. And so in total, we have n minus k tiles. And of those n minus k, k must be dominoes. So we have n minus k choose k tilings that use k dominoes. Summing over all k, we have n choose 0 plus n minus 1 choose 1 plus n minus 2 choose 2, and so on, which is the sum of this diagonal. But again, this is also the number of tilings for a row of length n, so that gives us f sub n. 
there are plenty more interesting relationships between Fibonacci numbers. Like, enough to fill a whole quarterly journal with them. Link in the description. But my goal here is to get you playing with them, so here's a problem for you to try out. Consider the sum n choose 1, f sub 0, plus n choose 2, f sub 1, plus, and so on and so forth, up to n choose n, f sub n minus 1. That is the sum over all k of n choose k, f sub k minus 1. Proof that that sum comes out to f sub 2n minus 1. I'd love to see your proofs in the comments below. And there's one more relationship between Fibonacci numbers that you may have seen before. If you take the ratios between consecutive Fibonacci numbers, you get 1 over 1 is 1, then 2 over 1 is 2, then 1.5, 1.666, 1.6, and so on. The further out we go, the closer that ratio seems to get to something around 1.618-ish. That value, known as the golden ratio, phi, is equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Where does that come from? That's the subject for the next video. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.